Many students from different countries chose to study in Northern Cyprus. It has become a choice location, especially for students from Nigeria. There were things that I didn't, I didn't plan. I thought I was coming to Europe, and when you come to Europe, perhaps when you go to school, you're going to get a job, and you work in school. So this was my plan. But when I got here, the whole game changed. I, it was hard. I love this place in terms, people talk about so much of racism, but I have not really faced it in terms of the environment. They're welcoming, they're friendly, especially when you can say Merhaba and Asusinez, oh my God, they love you already. If you can speak a little bit of Turkish, they're welcoming. For, to me, they were welcoming. Many choose Northern Cyprus because of its great universities. The Mediterranean Sea, and of course, with its world-class facilities, reasonable tuition, and living expenses. I met a friend who was here in Cyprus, and then I knew him. We finished from the same secondary school, and then he says, oh, "Cyprus is okay. All you need is just your basic results and all that, and you could get admission into it." And I said, "Okay, I'll give it a try." So my major reason for coming to Cyprus was to come have my master's degree. That was my plan. My name is Ridwan Alatunji Olaoke, and I'm from Ogun State in Nigeria. I live, based, I live, I, have, I was born and raised in Lagos. All my life I lived in Lagos. Maybe once in a while I went to some other states, but I basically lived all my life in Lagos. And I'm currently undergoing my PhD program in business administration in Eastern Mediterranean University. A year before I came to Cyprus, I was serving the government, NYC, the National Youth Service Corps, and I, I served as a teacher in Lagos State. I served in a high school that I finished from as first code, FCA. Uh, I taught several subjects, economics, commerce, uh, business studies. I taught that for about a year. And I also was running my internet cafe, my personal internet cafe. So I was shuttling between teaching and running the cafe. But it was quite hard, though, trying to balance both of them together. So that was what literally I was doing a year before I came to Cyprus. Being able to adapt in a new environment acquired tasking. But for Olatunji, these were experiences he would leave to tell the story. I flew all the way and while I landed, it was at night, I landed at night. So when I got into the airport, it was a bit different from Istanbul. It was and a lot different from Dubai airport. So I was like, hey, we're here, it's looking quiet. So I came outside, somebody came to pick me up. We drove all the way, a long way to school. We were put in a hostel. I thought, yeah, hey, yeah, finally I've landed somewhere abroad, right? And I think a day after they told us, you have just one day to get out of this place. And I haven't even found any place. I came here with just a school bag and one traveling bag. And that traveling bag actually, uh, cockroaches, had, uh, a rat has actually eaten it. So I put paper to just block. It was so funny though. But I came here with a friend. So we found a one bedroom apartment, luckily. And three of us came together and said, we're going to take it. But I didn't have enough money with me. So I told my friend, you, can you pay for everything? I give you all I have. Can you pay for everything? And then I'll pay you as I get my money back. So I stayed on the, I stayed in the sitting room. I mean, you know, the chairs, you could collapse them. So I collapsed the chairs and that was my bedroom. So they took the room. I took the sitting room. I said, I'm okay. We split the money equally, but I was going to pay Houston mentally. And the guy who rented the apartment to us, Puria, he told me something then. He says, if you want to actually make some money on this island, and you want to get a job, announce yourself in class, show them that you, you know something. Don't keep quiet. And perhaps they're going to employ you and it might be good for you. So those were my first days. It was hard. Believe me, I couldn't take a cab. Kebab was like an expensive meal, so I have to put it in two. The 25th of February, when I came to Table Dot and I told them, okay, I want to get this job because I've been, I thought that it was that easy. Just go there, tell them you want to work and they'll take you. Until I got there and I realized, hey, dude, you're not the only student that got into this school. <laughs> you, you have to hustle for it. I got there and then they told me they're not going to give me this job. So I got back home so disappointed. 
but I still kept on going to classes. I kept asking people. I kept talking to people. I need a job. I'm going to work. I need a job because I know that the amount that I had left with me was not enough. I asked people, of course, I prayed because I believe so much in God. But in all this hardness, that hardship that I was going through, I, a lot of hardship. Sometimes I didn't eat. Sometimes I eat 101 or 100 or something, 001. It depends on what you have. But I, I had this belief in me that it was just for a while. It was just for a while. I, if I kept on doing what I could do best, I'm going to get there. At that point, I started talking to people that I need a job. And I literally told my mom when I left the Nigeria, I told her, you're only going to pay for one semester. So you're only going to pay. That's what I said. Only one semester. After that semester, I'm going to get scholarship and I'm going to work with the school. That's what I told her. I didn't know how. I just said, I'm going to work with my department. Only one semester. So in class, I I, because I followed the advice of the Puya guy. So in class, anytime I'm in class, I'm always answering questions, reading ahead of the class. EMU has very well stocked library, I must say that. So I, the library was actually enough for me. I had access to the internet, I had access to database, EMU has access to large databases. So if I had access to all that, all I needed to do was read. Mind you, I didn't have a laptop. So I'd go to the library, work in the library, read and read, read ahead of the class. The man who taught my first class was the vice chair. The second man was the chair. Oh, no, I announced myself. They liked me in class, and I showed that I knew something. I wasn't just making noise like, hey, I don't know what. I was making intellectual contributions, believing and hoping that soon enough, whatever suffering that I was going through was going to end. Most times, our expectations of a new place is different from the reality. Many students who come to Northern Cyprus to study come with different expectations. I learned a lot in adapting to a new environment. It's conducive for learning. It's actually an education island. That's what I tag it, a student island. Basically, if you come here, you want to come read. So I have this peace here. I'm relaxed. I'm not hustling. I'm learning. And then there's this beautiful outlook of nature. You could just go somewhere, relax. Oh, no, it's actually a beautiful place. And also, consider the fact that EMU is home to a lot of international students from different countries. Uh, it gives you a whole view of diversity. And that's what this environment has been. I mean, I worked as a cook while in the hardship days. I met a lot of people. Of course, the good, the bad, the ugly. But uh, the good ones superseded because the way I worked, they loved me more. So I, those kind of experiences motivated me to believe that something is still going to happen. That in this environment, no matter how much complain, people complain about it. This place really changed my life positively. I know why I said that. Before I left my country, of course, I, I had this conviction of God that I could come here, but I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, when you're in Nigeria, you're from an average family, and maybe perhaps some things are done for you, you know, you're getting access to some things that it pretty much looks normal. You, you know, there are some things you don't want to go through. But then when I got here, I hit my rock bottom. I mean, rock bottom. I mean, I was desperate for any kind of job just because I wanted to make it. I wanted to keep myself going. I didn't want to call home all the time. So working in the kitchen, wow. It put me in that humble place. I mean, it gave me a whole different outlook to life. And I was there like, if this person is going through this and he's trying to make ends meet, what about you? So I came here, putting so much work into it, into the department. The professors noticed my potential. And then when I stepped up to the chair and I said, I want to work as an assistant. He says, that's it. I'm quoting his words. He says, yes, you're the right person for the job. I was, I was amazed. The next summer, I was interviewed. When I got interviewed, they liked what I put. They liked what I said. They took me first, almost immediately. And I was given full scholarship and paid. A full assistant. I mean, I almost cried. I called my mom. I says, yeah, the promise I made to you is already fulfilled. You're not paying my school fees anymore. The idea that they don't, they, don't, uh, they don't respond to black people or they're racist, that changed the whole idea. Before now, people have told me that they're never going to give you the job. They only take Cypriot people. They only take Turkish people. But the way I got the job, it changed the whole story. 
like there is no racism if you have good potentials nobody's gonna throw it away i mean that changed my whole positive my whole outlook to the space and I, i accepted this space more i was really happy so those were one of the ways that the fact that i could put in positive efforts and get positive returns that i could learn humility i mean it rock bottom i mean i must say i can never ever forget the impact of EMU. In that part, EMU really contributed to my life. That's why I'm grateful to EMU for that. I'm grateful to God, first and foremost, but EMU was a platform for that. My teachers, Professor Mustafa Tumer, I asked him, then, why did you take me? He said, I saw a light in you. And I'm glad that he said he saw that light and I'm still there. So I'm grateful for that. I'm really, it changed my life. If you're a prospective student and you want to come to Cyprus, one thing that I always say is, Stay focused. Stay determined. You have to be able to define your clear goal before leaving the country. Do you want to come to study or you want to come to hustle? If you're coming to hustle, then you might have some problems. But if you're coming to study, just focus and determine. Be determined. You would actually get something. The sky is not just your limit. I did this. Uh, somebody asked if, <laughs> if I'd like to go through what I went through before coming, when I got here. I still want to go. I don't think I want to be a rich kid coming here. Because this thing taught me humility and taught me how to focus. I focused. Sincerely, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know no one. Nobody in the department knows me. Nobody knows my father. But still, I got here and I made it as a loner with God. So if you're coming here as a student, focus. Stay determined. When you come here, keep up with what you're doing. Nobody throws away potential, a good potential. One day, someday, your hard work in good faith and integrity is going to pay off. If you saw me then, you think I lost hope, but I didn't. I knew something was coming. So all through the first semester was hard for me, very hard for me. But then it took a new turn when the department saw the potential and they took me and full scholarship immediately. And now from staying in a one bedroom apartment, staying in a sitting room on a couch, sleeping on a couch all through my days, eating so much. I can't remember when last I ate noodles now. Eating so much of noodles because I didn't have money. But now I'm able to get my own apartment, stay alone in my own apartment, pay my bills, pay my rent. Not being able, I've not received funds from home in many years now. And I believe that the story has not even ended yet. Because I still want to graduate and become a professor. That's my goal. But for this now, it's like a success story. And it tells me that anything is possible if you believe. And I'm still grateful to EMU for giving me the opportunity to serve them.